Welcome back to the YouTube channel, it's your boy Mr. Ghana Baby and I'm back again with another video. I mean, it's my last day in Kubasa. I was supposed to be in Accra by now, but I just had to do this story. That's why I'm here. Ghana. <laughs> my brother. Yes, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you too, man. I've heard a lot of good things about you. Likewise. I was supposed to leave today and I was like, well, you know what? If I don't see you, I'm not going to leave. Appreciate that, man. Why is it that everybody's talking about you? <laughs> Good food, man. Good food. <laughs> <laughs> it is. People love good food. Of course. Your name and where are you from? Well, um, they call me Chef K. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm from um, Toronto, Canada. Were you born in Ghana or you were born in Toronto? No, I was born here. I was born in um, Yamase, Aguna, which is like um, Mampong. Some part of, some, it's a village in Kumasi somewhere, like deep down there. So you're a village boy? I'm a village boy. Just like me. Yeah. Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> what took you to Canada? Um, I guess at a young age I didn't have a choice, right? My yeah. mom seen my situation in Ghana and she decided to take me. What bring. kind of situation are you talking about? Well, I had like a she left she left me when I was like thirteen months, right? Oh. To go to Canada. And when she left I was living with my, my father and my stepmother. And you know how step parents the situation there, I was being maltreated a lot you know so she found out and later on the line when i was like nine years old she came to ghana and she seen how i was living it wasn't a good situation so she she took me and my older brother so i would say that you lived all your life in canada yeah mostly yeah for sure how was the experience like it's cool man it's <laughs> yeah, bittersweet come again bittersweet you know bittersweet <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's nice uh, and then there's good times and bad times, you know? Uh, yeah, I understand. Yeah. And uh, now you're in Ghana. Yeah. How long have you been here? Um, five years this April. Five years? Yeah. Have you, do you miss Canada? I miss, I miss certain situations, but then when I see what I've been able to accomplish in five years in Ghana, you know what I mean? I see the future here more than over there. What, what was your main intention moving to Ghana? Like, what were you thinking? Why do you have to leave Canada and move back to Ghana? There's no place like home, man. And um, I, f I felt like um, if I brought what I learned from there to here, I could establish myself and push myself a lot easier than over there. You know what I mean? So you're trying to say that there are more opportunities back here than over there? Is that what you're trying to for, say? For, for us that traveled and have like a different way of thinking, when we bring that way of thinking to over here, yeah, there's more opportunities for us. What are you doing in here now? I'm running a restaurant. I'm cooking hospitality business, okay. basically, because the, the compound I live in is also like a whole store for students to rent out. Okay. So I supply the students with food, and I rent out my, my uh, compound. Five years in Ghana. Establishing your business in here, was it that difficult? Extremely difficult. <laughs> <laughs> How difficult it is? The thing is, you know, when you come to Ghana, the way we do business abroad, it's not how Ghanaian people do business. You know, we do business like nine o'clock is nine o'clock, ten o'clock is ten o'clock. You know what I mean? Like your word is your bond. But I had to find out very quickly that Ghanaians don't live by that same code. Ghanaians do whatever they want, whatever they want, however they want. So, if you're not mentally strong, they will literally mess up everything you have planned in one second. Wow. Yeah, and that's not to bash anybody. It's like one thing I realized is that when you travel, your mind changes. Right? The fact that a lot of people in this country never really traveled outside of Ghana, don't know how hard it is for us. You know what I mean? Like, we have to struggle to make a dollar. Let's go there. You have to struggle to make a dollar. Yeah, for sure. How is the struggle like? Because, you know, me living in Ghana right now, I know if you're living in, in Canada, USA, definitely there are people out there who normally say that those places are heaven on earth. I know people don't like me saying this kind of things, but I just wanted to know, you said you were struggling. What kind of struggle were you going through? Because I know so many brothers in here who are dying. Some of them even want to cross the Mediterranean Sea just to go to such places. How was the difficulty? What kind of difficulty were you facing? In okay, well, if I could just give you one example of like, in Ghana, mm -hmm. you could pay um, your rent for like five years. You know what I mean? You can live in one house for two years by paying one-time rent. Over there, you have to pay rent every month, right? So that's just rent. Then you gotta pay your utilities, which is like gas, 
gotta pay for heating, gotta pay for water, gotta pay for your food, transportation. You know what I mean? So when you add up all those things, like you have to literally live by the dollar. And and the thing is, you can't live in someone's house like Ghana. But over there, it's not like that. You know, you have to rent out someone's house, apartment, and each month you have to pay. Right? So you always have to be working. You always have to be struggling. I, I know certain people who've been in Canada or America their whole life, and they can't afford to come back to Ghana. Why? Because they have no money. Or the job that they do, they can't afford to leave the job because if they leave, they're going to lose the job. Right? So people think that it's, it's, it's gold over there, but it's really not. It's more like slavery. Are you kidding me, brother? No, nah, man, I'm telling you the truth. Anyone who's living in Canada right now will concur what I'm saying. It's, it's like slavery. I'm not the one who's saying this, but from the horses on mark, can you repeat again so that they'll know that it's not for me? Yo, Canada, US, UK, anywhere that's abroad, that's not Ghana, it's literally slavery because the thing is, it's not your country. So you don't have no family there that you can rely on just in case things don't go well for you, right? So you have to literally like, have to always be pushing. You gotta be strong, right? You don't have nobody you can fall back on. The government doesn't care about you because you're not his people, you know what I mean? And then the system doesn't care about you because you're not their people. So it's like you're being pushed into a box that you have to struggle to survive, you know what I mean? Like you've been in the jungle, basically. One more time, are you living or you're surviving in here? Here I'm living. I can say I'm living. You know what I mean? Like, I'm free. Like, this is freedom. You know what I mean? Like, I can actually breathe quality air, drink quality water. You know what I mean? Talk to quality people. You know, like, the thing is, I'm not saying Ghana is easy. Yeah. Nah. What I'm saying is, if you're from abroad and you have a little something along with your brain, you can live like a king here. Can I get it? Yeah, 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 for sure. Now you're back in Ghana, and I definitely know that you have a message for young Africans. What will it be? Young Ghanaians. Young people on the continent. The only message I can give the people, the young people, is this. Yo, slow money is better than no money, right? And the way we make money really matters. The thing about the young Africans is we want everything so fast. Right, because we see people driving cars, we see people doing this, we want to do the same thing. But it's only about today. You know what I mean? We'll be out there and you know that that envy always wants something that doesn't belong to you. You feel with him. You know what I mean? Try your best to work hard for what you have and appreciate the little you have because what you have in Ghana is way better than what you can get outside. Believe me. So we feel crowd, we make your body crowd mana bano. And this is our body thing. You know what I mean? Timu and stop size sika pesika phone pena a drosu kwa no bia ko share drosu kwa no pesika no you guys cut it out cuz sika phone bia ni sika so what you say i don't know if that makes any sense what i'm trying to say but yeah. yeah like i feel like the young people like they want to rush too much they rush too much when they see somebody doing something they don't know how that person did it but they want it and that's not the way cuz what they do makra she go be sa no person will do sika no they want to rob you you give somebody like a small chance say yo ya dey we mommy she we mommy we do see cases here. Do you know if you're a British car, but not a statue of Jumoha? Do you want to say what Jumoha cry? The people of Bum cry, you don't want to do nothing in Ghana because the young people here are so money hungry. That's, that's not how. The more you guys treat people good, the more they want to come back. You get me? So I think it's, it's on the young people to know, say, if people are going to come back to this country, this continent, to work and bring their money to invest. You have to be able to maintain that, to be able to look after that. So that person has confidence in you. Say, we could be a branch of her, she waste money. We could be a branch of her, she waste money. But if you can't leave this because we're so general, we'll be here. Do you think that it's worth it to invest in an African country? 100%. But do Africans think it's worth it to invest in your own country? That's the question you gotta ask. We don't believe in ourselves. We don't, we don't think what we have is good. That's the mentality at time. You gotta you gotta clean where you live. So when people come they say, oh hands are full. Why people come here they see us peeing and shitting on the floor? You think they respect you? 
because when you go to his country, you can't do that. So we, are, we have to change our way of thinking about our own. We don't like what we have. We think what we have is dirty, and it's not. Final message to the African diaspora living out there. Yeah. What is the message for them? If you have something to tell the fellow brothers and sisters living over there, what are you going to say? Yo, okay, I hear a lot of people tell me the same thing over and over that Ghana's not ready, Africa's not ready for people to come back, right? And my question to you guys is, if you're over there, how do you expect it to be ready? Because a lot of you guys have the skills, the trades, the ambition, the knowledge to come and fix this place. If you're waiting for somebody to fix it so you can come, who's going to fix it? And the thing is this, our parents, they, they sacrificed for us to go over there. And my mom sacrificed for me to go over there to get an education. So you got to sacrifice for yourself to come here and help your people. Like, there's people, foreigners coming here looting our gold, looting our resources, only because people like us are over there getting looted ourselves for our own resources, which is human resource, you know what I mean? So I just tell everybody, be patient with the people in this country, because they're real people. And there's no place like home, man. Come back home and try to, you know, let's, let's all do this together, because the more of us there is, the more they can't come back and loot us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, oh bro. my God, you know what? I think coming in here tonight was worth it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I just want to say thank you so much for talking to me. Well, likewise. But where can we find you? If anyone is in Kumasa and they want to come do business there or okay. maybe buy something from you, where can they find you? Okay, well, we're called Barbecue City and um, we're in KNUST Compass, basically, address the new site. So our phone number, I'll put it out there real quick, 024-708-4437, 024-708-4437, and yeah, you can find us here or just, whenever you come to KNUST, just happen to ask somebody, I'm sure somebody, will, somebody must have heard of us, and they'll direct you to the right direction, you know. Thank you so much for talking to me. Bro, thank you too, man. Went to Ghana, now we're acting. Went to Ghana, now we're acting. Huh?